Good day, fellow investors. Today, a change of topic. I want to really give you my best stocks so that everything that we do on this channel fits and is clearly structured. So let's start. Today, I'll give you my best stock for India exposure. India is a growth country growing at staggering economic rates, 1.5 billion people. So it's good to have portfolio exposure to that. I'm going to give you my best silver stock, precious metals, with the Fed lowering interest rates, with everybody promising to print more and more money, gold and silver might do good. And I want to show you how I invest in silver through a silver mining company that is undervalued. I practically buy the silver for cheap. It will be the third largest silver producer in the world. Then, as emerging markets are growing, as Africa is developing, things are going forward in the world, no matter what happens. I think base metals are incredibly important, copper, zinc. So I'm going to give you my base metals pick, one of the best picks. Then, then I'm going to give you one of my best growth stocks that will grow revenues approximately 50 to 100% percent over the next few years so a huge growth stock and then i'm going to conclude by giving you one of my best dividend stocks that has paid dividends in double digits it is not linear because it depends on the price on the market but a huge dividend stock that is part of my portfolio so let's start with the five stocks that i'm buying now so here it is the five stocks i'm buying now is vedanta limited traded on the new york stock exchange it is an indian miner so it has exposure to india it is diversified mostly zinc miner but has everything from copper aluminum oil and all other things zinc especially as i said then it will grow silver production further it has a very good dividend depend on metal prices and it will grow 50 to 70 percent over the next few years due to huge investments let's start company overview vedanta resources is the mother company Angrit Agrawal is the owner of the company. And then Vedanta LTD, what you buy, owns 64% of Zinc India, Hindustan Zinc, also traded in India. And it is one of the lowest cost producers of Zinc. You have Aluminum, Zinc International with the Gamsberg mine in South Africa, power producers in India, steel, iron, oil and gas, copper, everything so really really exposed to emerging markets and especially to india in a diversified way if we look at the financials just nine months of ebitda were 2.5 billion net debt is 12 billion so eight percent cost one billion of cost so 1.5 billion is the remaining cash flows that's usually invested at high return on capital employed of 14 percent so you have a diversified base metal global miner that offers a high return on capital employed and a high margin EBITDA margin of 28 percent which means that the cost of mining are low it has some debt as said the 12 billion in dollars it's 90 percent in indian rupees at eight or nine percent so not that uh scary but to keep in consideration and perhaps one reason why it is cheap so largest integrated zinc lead producer globally major silver producer expected to be in top five silver producers in the future largest zinc deposits in south africa low oil cost production at 7.5 dollars aluminum copper in india some issues there legal issues iron ore and power so the key is also the growth the investments are self-funded when these investments start printing money when everything normalizes on the commodity field this company might do four or five billion in ebitda two three billion in free cash flows so two three billion in free cash flows per year on a market cap of just nine billion is my upside story when all these pieces of the puzzle fall into place or under the sunshine they are continuing to grow on all fronts really investing heavily to take advantage of what's going on in india and service the demand of the growing economy growing at staggering rates 
Just an example, Gamsberg uh, was just recently commissioned, so we can expect increased zinc production. And then there are all, fa all phases for the next 30 years of zinc production. So we will see how it will work out. The zinc is cyclical, up and downs. But if you buy in a down and current prices are down, let's say, and you sell in an up, you make a lot of money. You just have to do the opposite of what the market does. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're staging for a strong future. Now, why is Vedanta, according to me, a relatively good business? Because when it comes to mining, if you have the lowest cost production, then whatever happens on the market with volatile metal prices, you make money. You make less money with, when prices are low, you make more money when prices are high, but you have stability and you can weather all the cycles. If you look at the total cost curve positioning, Vedanta is pretty well positioned in the first quartile on zinc, oil and gas, copper, iron ore, and then Zinc International. In the future, the cost curve will be, that in Zinc International production will be higher and the cost will be lower. Plus Vedanta offers growth. It is a growth story. Just the capacity there is expected to increase 50% or even more what's that 70 80% from 0.73 million tons per annum to 1.35 million tons in fiscal year 2021 when that happens not only zinc production will increase but also silver production which is in the ore there and has to be mined which will lead Vedanta to become one of the top five miners silver miners in the world silver prices are also low but if you look at the top 10 silver producers fresnillo has a market cap of 7 billion 7.5 billion dollars eight i don't know what's the pound dollar exchange now and uh, if you look at pan american silver which is below the top five the market cap is 3 billion vedanta has a market cap of 9 billion so i think that whole silver story is not even priced in here I would add the value of 3 billion that might unlock in the future, especially if silver prices go up. Now, investment analysis, if I assume zinc prices of $1 over the long term, like it was the average from April 2016 to March 2017, then EBITDA should be around 21,450 crores, lower zinc prices. It's hardly assumable to stay low for longer, so even that EBITDA was much lower, 15 crores, but still positive. And when it comes to cash flow basis, long term, I think EBITDA should be between 15k crores and 30k crores as they use Indian rupees to make the calculations. Uh, I deduct the Indian government to 35% stake in Hindustan in zinc, so 10 to 20 crores. Uh, debt costs are 6 crores. This leaves 4 to 14 crores. And taxes leaves free 10 crores per year. That's the free cash flow range as it is now from 400 million to 1.4 billion. Average, I would use 0.9 billion. So that's a free cash flow yield of 10% on current metal prices and no growth conservative bad scenario. If we add 100 percent production growth in oil, 50% in zinc, 100% in silver, and possible improvements as it's very bad in other businesses we could have an average long-term free cash flow of around 1.5 billion that's an 18 percent on the current market cap it will be volatile perhaps that average free cash flow will go to 3 billion slap a 7 10 price to free cash flow and you have 20 30 billion so it's a two free beggar i expect over the next few years and that's my expectations this is all from my stock market research report written i think in april and also in february so it takes me a while to analyze but just for the record i added a little bit to my model portfolio just a week ago of vedanta now the risks i think they are priced in but it is owned by another company then it has one major owner, so he can do whatever he wants. They did an acquisition of Anglo-American shares. They made a lot of money as the shares went up, but the market didn't like it and really crashed the stock 20% back in, I think it was October, January. 
Further, there are some issues with government in India, uh, suspension of mining in the state of Goa. Copper India is also in issues, but if nothing happens, okay, no, it's not priced in. If this improves, then it will add to EBITDA and cash flows. Zinc prices are relatively low over the last years. If they go back to previous highs, then this will be a cash printing machine. Another issue is the debt, but you have to check consolidated debt, 10 billion cash in investments, 4.4 billion. So whatever happens, given the diversification, given the low cost, I think they will be able to service that debt, and especially given how much money is being printed in the world. It is extremely volatile. If we look at the chart over the past few years, it goes up to 20 and then down to three when everybody was pan panicking on commodities. I think we are now again in a downturn, but you have to be ready for this to go even lower. That's the volat that's volatility. The business will probably continue to do well. So to summarize, margin of safety, market cap of 9.4 billion, cash flows of 1.5 billion, cash of 4 billion, potential earnings of 3 billion on a price earnings ratio of 10 equals 30 billion. So that's the upside. The downside is limited by the quality of the assets. Dividend 10% and higher over the long term. It will be volatile this year, just 1%, perhaps next year more. Issues there are India, South Africa, debt, rewards, India, silver, emerging markets and growth. So this is a business that's not sexy. It is mining, it is government issues, India, South Africa. But when you look at the cash flow, if I deduct the cash on that, the yields are above 10%, even 20%. And I'm looking at the risks. Can this go bankrupt? There can be issues, but it didn't go bankrupt in 2016 when it was much more levered, uh, did some wrong acquisitions earlier, 2013 oil acquisition. So it survived. I think it will survive whatever happens in the future. But if it doesn't, I'm still always positioning my portfolio so that if I lose, I lose X. But if I win over the next five, 10 years, I make three, four times the X. So it's something I'll balance. I'll carefully watch the stock and uh, update on earnings, read what's going on, trying to look at the basic fundamentals long term. All the analysts are asking the questions on what's going on with the Anglo-American purchase of shares, etc. So really a short term focus, especially as the stock is also traded in India. And then there again, new stock markets so of very, very short term focus. And that's what I'm trying to take advantage by buying now the short term focus on the market that's missing the long term emerging market, India, a growth story, silver story, and whatever is going on with Vedanta. So we have the market short term, long term India. And this is why I bought and I am long Vedanta. I'll try to do this videos uh, about what I buy to give you better perspective on the channel at least once a quarter. Those who want to follow everything I do, get the reports, get the portfolio, get the trades in the 15, 20 minutes after I make the trade on email, please subscribe to my research platform. Even if you don't think you get, get the value there or you have your own, you can check everything I do. There is a 28 day money back guarantee. So feel free to check it. It's all there. No worries, no hard feelings if you decide to discontinue. So for free, you have everything. And this Vedanta is one example of what I do. And I always try to find the not priced. What can I get for free? I get the silver for free. I get the growth for free. I get the issued ish mines and uh, concentrators and smelters, whatever it is there in India that have issues. If those things turn around, I get them for free too. So the oil perhaps also re relatively cheap and free if it gets well. It's very diversified. Some things are going to work. Some things are definitely not going to work. But when I compare it to a 9 billion price tag, then I say, okay, it's worth it. So let's say on the risky side of the portfolio investments, but it has a margin of safety in the ore, in the ground and in the growth that's going to happen and is going on no matter what we think about it in emerging markets. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.